Hey there everybody, my name is Snitch, and welcome back to another episode of CO Select. Little announcement to start off today's episode, I've actually for the first time ever gone over a thousand rating in the Advanced Wars by Web Global League. Uh, I don't expect this necessarily to last too long, but I thought it was pretty cool that I've actually made it over a thousand for the first time. I've been within one game quite a few times, uh, obviously my record's not that great. 54% win rate over 100 games. Actually, my 100th game is where I went over 1,000. But uh, either way, I'm pretty happy that I managed to break the four-digit barrier, even if it's only temporarily. Just thought I'd let you guys know that, yeah, my climb has been going pretty okay. Today's replay is against Shigeru Miyamoto. That's right, it's actually the developer of the original Mario and Zelda games playing some advanced by web. Happened to queue into them on the league. Today's map is Corsic Finale. This map's really interesting. It's actually a four-base map for each team. Um, very aggressive map, lots of fighting, no airports, uh, comm towers in the bottom left, and yeah, lots of interesting fronts to kind of fight around. There's obviously a lot of cent central properties, like these, uh, kind of, uh, 11 properties here, 10 properties? I can count. Ten these kind of 10 properties in the middle are normally quite contested, especially obviously these more central ones here and here. Uh, but you also have these kind of, like, side flanks, lots of infantry battles could occur in these locations, infantry battles could occur up here, and then you also have these comm towers down here, that while, you know, there's not much down here resource-wise, it's actually very relevant that you, uh, keep, um, keep aware of this location, you know, if you end up losing control of your comm tower, it can very easily snowball, especially in this zone, uh, you can end up getting double towered and kind of lose control of the game, but obviously the bases, they are within six towers of these towers, so if you build a tank here, you can always kind of get in range. So it, it is easy, a little bit easier to maintain than it might look, but also something you do have to think about. Today's game is a tier 3 match, uh, my opponent's playing Rachel. Rachel's day-to-day -day power is that her units repair an additional HP, um, however she does pay the cost for this. Uh, her regular power, not that impressive, gives her additional luck bo boost, um, I think it was up to 0 to 40, I think it's worse than Nell's, who is 0 to 60, right, Rachel's regular power is, is 0 to 40, but her super CO power, very influential, uh, drops three missiles, first of which hits the location with the most foot soldiers, the second of which hits the location that's the most efficient, and the third hits, uh, somewhere else that I should be aware of, but I'm not in this exact moment, so, you know what, I'm just gonna open the chart and look. <laughs> Because I can't remember where the third one lands. Uh, the third one lands at a unit HP. So, the, the highest HP units. I, I knew it was something like that. I, I knew it was something different, but I, I couldn't remember the, uh, the specific value. Um, I'm playing Kindle in this game. Kindle, very notorious, uh, kind of a noob stomper CEO, I'd say. Very, very effective in tier 3, especially against people who don't play into her very effectively. Kindle gains a massive 40% attack power boost when on urban terrain, um, which is basically just any property that's capturable is counted as urban terrain. So her units are doing 40% more damage. This makes her very difficult to interrupt captures on because you take a lot of attack damage back and it's very impossible to fight her on cities. When Kindle sits tanks on cities, you're pretty much not getting her off them unless you have a lot of forces or you have like artillery or stuff like this. But Kindle could also deploy indirects and use them on cities herself. And obviously they also get a massive 40% firepower boost. Uh, on the opposite of Rachel, who has quite a useless CO power, Kindle's CO power is a very notorious urban blight. It deals 3 HP of damage to every enemy unit stationed on urban terrain, um, which is very, very impactful, obviously, because not only is it a lot of damage, and in Rachel's case, she kind of, like, quote-unquote, counters this by healing the values back immediately, but um, you're actually paying costs for those repairs, obviously. Um, so against most COs, you would put all their units to 9 HP or lower if they're already lower on cities and trying to repair. Basically wasting them a day and a half of uh, repair time or, or funding. Um, and also she gains an additional 40% power on her day-to-day. Her -day. So she's doing 80% <laughs> on cities. Um, and Kindle's superpower is uh, an 80% bonus, I believe, to her day-to-day. -day. So it's 120 on cities. So super insane numbers, honestly. I mean, I think it's a real, just like a dual strike design kind of scenario because yeah, it's really insane the numbers that Kindle has compared to other CEOs. Like nobody else goes this like dramatically high for no reason. Um, a lot of the time, it's just not even relevant. You know, you're just overkilling by so much. But additionally, she also all of her units get an additional three percent power, three percent firepower for every city that she currently owns in, in, during its duration. Um, so Kindle's are more of like the opposite of Rachel, where you're spending a lot more of your time focusing on your CO power because Urban Blight is so abusable and so punishable. Um, you don't always want to drop it straight away. Oftentimes holding it and waiting for a more value is just enough pressure on your opponent to where they can't safely station any units on, on cities, obviously, which is better for most of the time because of the defensive terrain, especially if they're your allied cities, you can end up healing. 
Um, but it's much harder for your opponent to play around that. And that's why she's traditionally seen as kind of like, yeah, like a, a quote-unquote noob stomper. Maybe a bit of an offensive term. But, um, you know, she's very hard to play around for a player who isn't good at kind of drawing fights away from cities. And also she kind of punishes you for playing the game kind of how you'd want to normally. You know, I think she, she, she punishes a lot of the fundamentals in that regard. So today's game is only really interesting, I think, because a lot of the times people talk about unit count, right? And, you know, one of the first pieces of advice is you, well, the first pieces of advice you get as a new advanced by web player is you should build a unit on every base every turn. Um, and they talk about unit count. Unit count's important. You always want unit count. Da, da, da. But, you know, I think it's, it's hard to truly understand why, I think, from like a base idea. It's hard to like listen to that advice and you could, you could use it, but I think it's hard to fully comprehend why is that so true? without kind of seeing, you know, maybe seeing it in action. I think this is a good game that kind of showcases the mistakes my opponent made in this one. I'm mainly focused around not building units, greeting for stronger tech up options, even when they're not particularly efficient, and kind of just ending up getting swarmed along the map by not being able to reinforce all their locations due to how much funding they're committing in individual spots compared to me. So yeah, let's get into it. My opponent is, is first in this game, playing as Orange Star. I'm playing as, obviously, the standard Cobalt Ice. Cobalt Ice is the best, don't at me. Double infantry build, very normal. I move my infantry up, obviously going for bases straight away. Very traditional. Nothing strange in the early game here, I think. Just some standard builds, both rushing for neutral bases, capping these cities. I go for this one first because it has a city chain of two. Obviously, whenever you see chains, you kind of want to go for them first because they're a bit more efficient. I could have gone for this one, obviously, but it doesn't link to anything, whereas this infantry will immediately move to this one, then can move to this one. You know, there's just there's at least a chain of two here that is mine. This one is a bit more contested, obviously, if my opponent's matching my movements, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just the more efficient path thing. Moving for the neutral base here on the right. My opponent starts capturing their neutral bases, moves their infantry in the same way as mine. On, on the mirror. This is obviously a, a map that's reflected on the diagonal as opposed to being reflected on the X or Y. I always find diagonal reflected maps are a lot more interesting to be honest. They kind of feel asymmetrical even though they're not necessarily. It's just kind of something about the design and the way they play out I always find very interesting. A lot of my favorite maps are more asymmetrical than, or oh, sorry, uh, uh, more on the diagonal axis than they are X and Y mirrored. I think a lot of the best league ones are as well. For my turn, moving down here for this base um, I think it's debatable whether you want to go for, oh sorry, this, this city. I think it's debatable if you want to go down first. Uh, obviously this is within three tiles, so I guess this is the most efficient move. But when it comes to like these properties and these properties, I think you can definitely kind of pick a side. Um, yeah, you should, you should go for this one first because the base is within three tiles. I was thinking it was two moves, but it was one. Start capturing my other neutral base, finish my captures on the left. Move up my penguins. I uh, could be moving down first to try and secure this comm tower area, but as usual, you know, you don't want to rush comm towers if you don't need to. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, it's within three tiles. Obviously, you want to capture the city first. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, just thinking, like, of options, like, you know, you want to go for closer cities, but also, you know, it's not as huge. As long as you aren't too late to your tower compared to your opponent, you, you can generally be fine in this area. I've had games where players will just sack a bunch of money at just delaying the comp tower, and it actually ends up being pretty painful. But I think it kind of de kind of depends on the game. I had one game on this map where I had an opponent who basically just threw away a tank, delaying this comp tower. Uh, and it didn't, I, I didn't feel like it should be worth it. I probably made mistakes on the rest of the map, but it actually ended up feeling really painful in the long run. My opponent just capturing properties here. As per the norm, infantry on both bases. So, so far, you know, keeping their unit count up, playing a very standard game. Nothing too weird. Here I start moving down, going for the uh, the city and the comm tower cap. Yeah, I end up moving my infantry down here. This is what I was talking about. You could either choose to go down, or you could just play for kind of these two properties first. I, I think both are fine. But the thing about this map is a lot of these areas, they're, they're quite limited in movement, mainly due to like the river kind of bridge formations. That it ends up being quite hard for like vehicles to traverse it too easily and reinforcing these sections can be quite difficult. Um, so I think getting a grasp on kind of these neutral areas is a little bit easier than, than or it's a little bit harder sorry, than capturing these ones. So I kind of like to push for, for down here first because I've had games where you know you lose control of this area and it snowballs really hard and it's very hard to get back especially because this is where your HQ is as well. Finishing my property caps, infantry on all bases. Same old, same old. Opponent going for more captures. <clears throat> Can't get the tank build here yet. First tank comes out on the south. So here is where I, I, I think about 
So when I see the tank on the south, something I immediately think about, and this is my PTSD, I guess, of this scenario, is that my comm tower is, is getting targeted. That's where I would, uh, you know, if the first tank comes here, this is the, the, these two areas are the obvious initial aggression. So I'm thinking they either want to play for this city or they want to play for my comm tower. Um, but I'm pretty on, on pace time-wise for my comm tower, so I'm not super concerned about it. I move another infantry down just in case. Like, the reason I move this down instead of moving it to the right is because I don't want to give up comm tower pressure too early. I want to have infantry here just in case I need to reinforce this section. End up moving another infantry down. This one, I think, was probably a mistake. Um, I think I should have just gone to the left with this one and just gone for these captures, because now I kind of have too many infantry in this section. Um, but again, you know, I, I, I'm thinking more about reinforcing this section than I am necessarily about going for economy. Uh, but I do think it, it was better to um, to maybe push it towards the center. One mistake I didn't put out for my opponent, perhaps, is that they, instead of capturing either of these properties here, they actually position this infantry aggressively, trying to hold this aggressive city. Um, I've, I've normally tried to discourage this for you guys. By default, I think you should always just play for the closer properties because it's it's very hard to reinforce this section if you're delaying your economy by so much. Like, I'll be getting vehicles out at a faster pace just by capturing closer cities as opposed to moving more turns, wasting extra days before my, my funding comes online. So I, I'll always be a couple turns ahead of economy because of these kind of moves. Um, so yeah, I think you should mainly just go for these cities first and then you could just contest the, 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 the central properties when you have your infantry in better positions. End up going for this city up here. Pretty standard stuff. I build my, my first tank here, so this is a response to this tank. Um, obviously my opponent goes first, right? So they get the tank out first in this map. I end up building my tank, you know, in, in response, because it covers both of these areas, and it's just, you know, I, I could choose to build it somewhere else and try and play more aggressively on that side, but I'd rather just play defensively to my opponent, not just give them free hits for ages by, by relieving all pressure and just kind of like, not dropping any, uh, any, any sort of counter unit in this location. So I build my first tank down here as well. Going to my opponent's next turn. They move their tank up into the section. Like I said, it's the comm tower threat. Like, I, I was already kind of ready for it mentally. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad I ended up moving this infantry down because my yeah my opponent immediately started th trying to threaten this left location, trying to close off the comm tower capture. And then moving their infantry to the right. I have three infantry to two here. So, they, they, you know, they, there is some advantages to be choosing to reinforce this section. And I am going to get this infantry out, ready to capture these properties in the next turns, but... It is delaying my economy a little bit, but it is giving me more of a stronghold over this this kind of like lower right section. Point goes for the capture in the top left. They actually end up building a recon here, which I think is, is pretty interesting. Not really what you would normally see, especially post first tank, you know? And I think they could have... No, they couldn't quite afford a tank. So, so I guess economy wise, there was no tank to purchase this turn, but that's actually maybe because of the way that they played their early capture game. I think they could have maybe had one of these properties on this turn. I need to like do it again, but I, I think maybe they could have had a tank on this turn if they played a, a slightly more reserved capture phase, but because of the aggressive infantry movement, they definitely kind of limited their own funding up a bit in that regard. Um, yeah, I suppose this turn they would have been capping here, right? So maybe they wouldn't be able to do it, but they actually built a second recon. So yeah, they go for a double recon here. And what you may notice is maybe they just forgot about this factory but this is the first example of them leaving a factory they only had 9,000 funding they built two recons and an infantry and then they end up with an empty base so they're already dropping a unit in terms of unit count here and it's to build recons which are generally only useful for harassing infantry in the super early game but as soon as tanks come online they're pretty useless because they can never walk into a tank's range so as long as you have tanks covering your infantry recons actually have no value i go for this cap down here make a little cute wall with my infantry to sit my tank in uh, this might be a little bit too defensive. I think maybe, you know, I could have uh, could have just set it like here or something. This position is a little bit, it's locking my tank in a little bit of the corner, to be honest. But it, it is protecting from a, from a first hit. And kind of what I felt was a little bit of a clever way. But, you know, maybe it's not that big a deal. <laughs> move my infantry down here to get, get ready for this property on the next turn. This one's sitting waiting for the port. Uh, move this one to the left, getting ready to capture this. Uh, as I move uh, down to- I start contesting the Sardra property because this tank isn't in range um, because it went to the left. Um, and I figure if I take an infantry hit, I'm Kindle, so I'll get a solid hit back. Start capturing these properties that my opponent isn't really looking at. They're not really contesting this kind of location, so I'm kind of getting these ones a little bit for free. Uh, the recon still isn't range down here, so I feel comfortable starting this one. Even though I might take a double hit, I do have two infantry in reserve, so I get good trades back. And I build a tank here to reinforce this section even more, because obviously the recon's probably going to move over here uh, on the next turn. Um, so I end up building a tank here, ready to cover the, the incoming recon moves. 
three more infantry. And you see, I haven't, I haven't skipped a base, right? I'm already 18 unit count to 15. Uh, you know, I, it seems like it's more, it's like one more than it should be as well, right? I don't know where my opponent's other unit went necessarily, but because I, I guess I got the FTA unit. And, and then I, so I should be, I should be 17 to 15. So maybe they missed another, another buy or they would lay on their base or something. I didn't see it. Maybe I, I missed a mistake here or something. I don't know. Either way, capturing their properties. Moving their infantry down. More infantry coming to the left. Tank ends up backing out again, because obviously I know I have the, the, the first hit um, advantage. They end up moving in for this infantry attack. Six and six. So this is a Kindle diff here. Normally this would be a seven, six or an eight, six, I think, but it's actually a six, six because I'm Kindle. Hitting Kindle on properties is never a fun time. They move in for this cap, actually, instead of going for the double hit. Uh, and I'll end up getting a good hit back. And this is actually a 6-5. Like, this is kind of like why Kindle can be so hard to play against for newer players. Because if you want to make aggressive infantry attacks, which is generally not a terrible habit, depending on the scenario, you can end up taking, like, huge punishes. Like, this is literally a losing trade. And it's just poking a city. Obviously, my opponent shouldn't take this hit. Um, but this is also why I imagine they didn't go for the double attack, because even if you go here, it's 6-6, six, six, your infantry won't kill this, and it will still take like 2 or 3 damage, and it just feels like really bad trades all around. And I have infantry here in reserve, I could double hit this lot, this spot next turn. Um, this one would be 6 HP, but just kind of stuck on this planes, can't capture these cities. So the, like, as soon as I get to this location first as Kindle, it just really shuts down my opponent's ability to have any aggression. They actually end up moving their recon to the left, maybe because they saw my tank, um, looking to threaten this infantry over here. And I was like, well, okay, I guess I'll just have a tank. Uh, the other recon comes up here to the top left, but these properties are kind of already done. Uh, it is threatening this property here, which prohibits me from capturing it next turn until I get uh, any reinforcement. But this top left one is already finished and these ones are already captured. So the recon isn't actually covering that much. Uh, so my next turn, they actually build an anti-air. Uh, so you see here, like, uh, I actually went all the way back. We'll just skip through it. I didn't realize the turn was over, and that was kind of like part of why I was, you know, so surprised. So they build one infantry, they build an anti-air, and then again, they leave two factories bare. Um, you'll see why next turn, I suppose, but it, it's very greedy for my opponent to be dropping these infantry. Like, I, I, it's again, it's another unit count advantage for me, and it doesn't seem like too much. I, I think you could definitely question the anti-air purchase as well, obviously because there's no copters, but I guess they're trying to focus on hitting infantry. Um, and they think it would be a good choice to kind of control this zone. But you'll quickly see like how far the unit count kind of snowballs in my favor. Just because my opponent is choosing not to build units and is instead greeting. Uh, start capturing my comm tower, move my tank up here out of range of their tank. Also threatening the central square. Protecting my infantry from the recon should they, they, they go for an attack. Finish capturing my properties, move my other infantry up. Uh, this is no longer any threat, so I don't have to commit units to this resource anymore. I do end up pulling back, because um, I don't want to. I don't want to sack an infantry to the recon for no reason. But I'm still threatening this city square, so my opponent can't move in and capture it or anything. I start capturing this one. Um, it is in range of the anti, and it is in range of the recon. And I did just say I have no reinforcements. So you might be thinking, why is that? And that's because I'm about to build a tank here. So I'd already made the decision to build a tank on this side um, to try and deal with these units, these vehicles kind of approaching that are obviously quite weak to tanks. Um, and then, yeah, obviously this this is within six squares, so I can move it straight into to, to defend any kind of attack on this infantry. I will get a really efficient trade on either the recon or the the anti air. Should they go for that, I'll move this infantry down to get the kill on this uh, five HP wounded infantry. Start capturing the two properties next to my city. Move my tank out, threatening all of these infantry here. And my opponent has committed so many so much funding to kind of vehicles that just lose to tanks that I actually have a lot of threat in this area. There's no. No units here to actually control this tank. So I'm threatening four infantry right now, and three of them are capping, so they don't want to move. Um, so I'm almost guaranteed to get a, a solid hit somewhere next turn. Move my infantry down, actually threatening this property. Obviously, it's within range of a base, so I, I, it doesn't seem likely I'm going to get it. I think I should have been playing for this one instead, but... I end up doing the same thing over here. I have two infantry to one, so I just start moving up, trying to threaten the city. You know, you can't trade into me, I'll win. And I have a threat on the city, so you know it's going to force a build response here of some sort. Some sort. I built a tank up here as well to kind of cover these infantry even more. And then I ended up building two more infantry. So I've got two tanks on the top side here. 22 units of 16 already. You, you kind of just see the unit count spiraling. My opponent's next turn. They had to make a pretty massive mistake this turn. I'm not sure what it was about, but we'll, you know, we'll see it. Uh, they ended up capturing their comm tower here. 
Finish the, the cap on the bottom right. Finish the poor cap. Recon does move down for the attack, and it is going to be a 9-6. I think this would be a 10-6 a on any other CEO, but <laughs> Kindle Diff, you know, I managed to take one point off the Recon. It's not that big a deal normally. Um, the other thing about having a tank in range to defend this city is like, the, the thing about putting any unit here against Kindle is it's just an instant sack, basically. As soon as I can move a tank onto the city, it's doing additional 40%, you know, it's a 140, 150 tank next time with my comm tower as well, and that just completely wipes out almost any unit. Even enemy tanks will be going down to 2-1 HP, I think. If not getting knocked out entirely, it might even be a one-shot with a comm tower, I'm not 100% sure of my math in that, that regard. Um, they know capturing these aggressive properties. They do go for a trade here, and I was kind of like, mm, that's weird, given that I have a tank and stuff. And two infantry. And they, they build a tank here to cover that. Move another infantry down to attack this. Trying to get the, the KO, but this guy clings on for dear life. What a hero. But I wouldn't have felt too bad about dropping this anyway, because obviously I can get a, uh, a big hit on this infantry from the mountains next turn. Um, and I, I, can, I can knock out this recon, so I'm not feeling too bad about it. Enemy tank guns are moving into the center, holding the city position. They do start going for this cap. And the recon once again goes to the right again, trying to stop these infantry. So I end up using this position to pull the recon back. You know, my opponent's units are just shuffling around, kind of not getting any value. Um, not getting any significant attacks or anything. Which is quite a lot of value for me. As a result. Uh, they end up going for an attack on this infantry to interrupt my capture. Basically sacking this unit, but I think they felt like I was going to get a free attack anyway with this tank. So maybe they just wanted to get some 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 small value, but you, you generally shouldn't go for this kind of attack. Like this is just giving me a free dude, especially in a game where my opponent is already forgoing uh, builds. You know, they're already not building a lot of units. <laughs> they're already missing a lot of infantry builds, and now they're kind of sacking their infantry. And obviously, if you don't have infantry on a push, you don't have infantry on an attack, you're not capturing any properties, which means you actually have no threat. So definitely not a great move, I think. And the big mistake they made here... First of all, again, they leave another base, don't build an infantry, but they also forgot to move their anti-air. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's a, a great move for it, but obviously you want to get it more out onto the board than it is, you know, maybe here on the left on this city, just kind of threatening some of these infantry or something. They, they kind of just forgot to move this. Um, but they also didn't build an infantry here, so I can't really believe that they would have used this factory regardless. Maybe they felt like this position was better for whatever reason? No, I, I don't think there's really any argument that it is. I think they just forgot to move it, but... Either way, once again, leaving a factory empty. Uh, I moved my tank up just to pick up this infantry. Feeling pretty confident because uh, while there's a second tank coming, uh, I'm not... You know, I'm right near my, my front line. I can easily retreat my tank. I start capturing it again. Go for the mountain fire, get a 9-5 on this city. Move my, my wounded infantry down, move my tank up. One shot the recon. Feeling good about that. Kindle things. Although, I really don't think any, any CO would have taken this kill, especially with the comm tower. <laughs> move all my units out. Uh, pick up the kill the KO on this uh, this unit as well. Keeping in mind this tank, you know, I was thinking about any ways I could have could got counterattacked here, but I didn't see any lines. Uh, yeah, end up moving this infantry here onto the mountain. Get a, get a, uh, get, get the two hit here. This infantry is actually on this square. It's just bugged out. Um, I start moving my infantry up to kind of get out of, out of the way of this recon. Getting ready to capture the city again. Move another infantry down to reinforce again. Four infantry to two down here. So this recon is forced to kind of stay in this area. And then I move my tank up here. While it is an attack range of this tank, obviously I can get a two hit KO response. Um, and even if they reinforce, I could do the same on this base. Anyway, I think I build another tank here anyway this turn. Yeah, I do build another tank here. So now three tanks to one in this location. So I'm feeling confident to push it as position aggressively. And I just build infantry on my other bases. Keeping the unit count high, you know, making sure I have units to threaten. My opponent's next turn, this recon moves up aggressively. They go for an attack on this uh, this infantry. I think this had a chance to knock out, but my opponent forgot to cap the comm tower. So <laughs> they end up uh, missing a bit of damage there. They do go for the double hit. Yeah, I think this could have been one and then a cap if they'd remembered to capture their comm tower first. So it feels bad. Always capture your comm towers. They end up sacking this infantry for a 1 HP infantry. Never really feels great. Infantry starts moving up. This tank goes up for the attack on my infantry. Um, they do go for a first strike on my tank. Ends up being an 8-5. I don't have much reinforcement in this area other than this tank from above. And it's not quite in range, I think. Three, four, five. Yeah, both these are wood forest tiles, so I actually can't get in range for a counter attack here. I think I felt a little bit safer with this tank up here, but I, it was actually more more dangerous than I thought. But at the same time, I am really close to my bases, really close to my cities. It's really easy to get my, my tanks healed up again. Um, their tank goes for a first hit here, and then they drop a medium tank on this base. Um, and I was like, well, okay, uh, <laughs> I guess. Um, and, and what this immediately means to me, you know, 
Well, again, a lot of players might be scared of this, and I, I said in my last video, like, uh, when you see a medium tank, it's normally a good thing, because it means your opponent is scared. In this case, I, I don't know, I think my opponent was just super aggressively teching up. I'm not really sure what the thought process is for here, but when I, when I do see this, I do feel pretty confident, because it means that all of these other bases aren't dropping tanks. You know, if I'm burning tanks on all these, all, the, all of these bases, you know, am I dropping two tanks every turn and my opponent wasted a medium tank in this upper right corner? Like, sure, this upper right corner is definitely a bit weaker for me now, um, and I can't throw in this tank or anything, but I, I'm also like, I don't know, like, you have, now you have way less unit strength than the rest of the map. And then once again, they leave two bases open with 5,000 funding remaining, choosing not to build infantry. 24 units to 16 already, and it hasn't even been my turn yet, so I'll have, you know, four more at the end of this turn, and any potential kills that I get, including this one here. Um, I think this move was probably wrong. I think I should have gone for the two hit on this infantry with the, this one and moved this nine HP down instead. Or started capturing the city maybe because this anti is not in range. Uh, yeah, I think it was kind of inefficient movement of my infantry here. Definitely shouldn't have been this one that moved. Somebody else could have taken out the five HP one. Uh, I go down, <laughs> I get a base hit on this infantry for 90%. That's a 150 infantry for you. Uh, move down, get a tank one shot on this infantry. Something you always have to be careful with against Kindle. It's just tanks on cities, one shot infantry as well. Um, that might be up to woods, maybe? I think I think on planes you can maybe get the one shot with a tower. But either way, you know, a 150, 140, 150 tank is just so insane against infantry, even when it, it shouldn't necessarily be. So I actually just end up getting a one shot because this, this infantry was stationed next to a city. Pull my wounded infantry back. I end up moving my tank in here and just kind of taking a free pot shot because this medium tank can't get in range, uh, mainly because it's blocked off by the, the, this forest. Um, so I just take a free pot shot on an infantry, especially one that won't heal because it's on a port. Uh, actually, I just go for the straight two hit KO. So I've already picked up three infantry this turn. I start capturing this city. My opponent is, is gravely behind an infantry at this point. You know, I'm 19 to 7. I have literally <laughs> almost triple the infantry of my opponent, and I probably will have triple the infantry at the end of this turn. Uh, end up re kind of shuffling around my, my units here. Creating a wall. I pulled my tank back on this city to heal, but I'm still threatening this capture to keep my opponent's units in this area. Um, but I, I'm healing my tank, you know, and they can't hit my tank, but next turn I could take like a stronger hit, maybe even on the city. I, I want to constantly be controlling this city tile with a unit if I can, because it means I could always move like a 7 HP tank onto here, and then it's a 150 7 HP tank. And even though it's chunked, it's not actually like weak, you know, it's still a very, very strong unit in, in that kind of location. As soon as it's on the tank, and because I'm playing Kindle, I'm just kind of playing to my strengths here. I'm just trying to keep my city tiles available. So I can always just go for big attacks, even with HP deficits. Um, so this is really playing to kind of let my CO's strength. End up picking up this this uh, this infantry with the second hit. I have the tank here, kind of to cover some of these infantry for this recon, but it'll probably get a hit in next turn, so it's just kind of unfortunate, I guess. Move the tank onto the city, build an artillery. Uh, it's not defended from this tank, but I figure if you put the tank here and you just sack it, it's just going to be a really mediocre attack, and I'm going to get kind of a free tank as a result, so I'm not too worried. Obviously, the artillery, standard counter to a medium tank, I would say 6,000, you know, three hit KOs, medium tanks, uh, by default, I think, and then obviously you're doing even more damage, but as soon as you get one hit with an artillery, I think it's 40% most of the time, uh, that's uh, more, you know, it's 1,600 times four, which is 64, so it's already more value than the artillery itself, which is only 6k. So you only need to get one hit on a medium tank to be efficient in damage. Um, so, you know, it's uh, at full HP. So it, it's pretty pretty easy to get to get value. And, you know, you can just kind of, because these things move so slowly, you can always kind of set up walls that they can't get through. So my opponent moves down. Does see a pretty good line here where they, they pick off this... Uh, this infantry, I suppose, but it is within my tanks, like all of my tanks, so <laughs> it's not super great. Uh, they end up going for the hit on this this infantry of the city. Uh, I guess they're going for the two hit KO. I think you could have just gone for the one on the river, maybe, if you were going to sack this recon, um, because obviously it's within my tank range as well, right? So this recon is going to die. Uh, so I think you may as well just go on for the most damage you could if you're going to sack it. Maybe they just didn't see it, it was in danger. They end up going for a hit here on my infantry, but it's planes into mountains, and that's why I put the infantry here to kind of like pressure this this space, but they end up taking a negative trade, which is just weakening this area so much for them. They do a double hit onto this infantry here, end up knocking it out, drop another medium tank. The medium tank's moving down here, by the way, I'm trying to cover this tank, um, but I'm not super concerned about that. I'll probably just take the tank knockout anyway. Build another tank down here, uh, moving the anti-air to the top left, kind of like to hold the, the infantry up here. 
building another infantry down here. And they're actually out of money, so they missed it all another base again. But at least this turn, you know, you can say, well, they only had 24, and apparently they really had to get another medium tank. Um, <laughs> so two medium tanks now for my opponent. But they really had to get another medium tank uh, immediately, apparently. So at least they actually ran out of funds going, you know, medium tank, tank, infantry. At least they're spending all their money as opposed to sitting on it. But obviously, uh, I think infantry, tank, 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 would have been a lot better. Because once again, they're leaving an empty base. You know, I'm 25 units to 15. And especially when you look at infantry, you know, I'm 10 infantry ahead. Uh, it's pretty crazy. End up picking the KO in this recon. Yeah, I didn't actually end up getting as big an infantry value last turn because I built two tanks, artillery, infantry as well because I had a lot of money. Uh, go for the, the hit on this this unit. I probably should attack from the city first. I'm not sure why. I, I guess I just wanted to keep something high HP, but if I did this the other way around, I probably would have preserved health. Uh, I just go for this this return hit here, put this infantry to 2 HP. So they have a lot of pressure on their comm tower. Even though it's a 6 HP infantry, they still have to send reserves here now to kind of bail this infantry out because of the poor trade they took. Uh, finish capturing the city up here. Start moving my other infantry in. I just go for the 2 hit KO on this tank. Not really worried about the medium tank um, counterattacks. Uh, as well as I move my artillery in here. It's kind of a clever move where, you know, they, they can't get any two hits on these tanks because they only have the one medium tank and it puts my artillery in a position to defend. Moving more infantry to wall, healing this infantry up, threatening my opponent's city with this capture. And, and part of the, the reason I have all these kind of like threats and all these infantry moving around is just because of, again, my unit count advantage. My opponent is, isn't dropping infantry, so I always have kind of infantry advantage everywhere I go, you know? I'm kind of swarming them in all these locations because they're committing so much money to these massive vehicles, saving money that they aren't spending on infantry. They're just kind of wasting a lot of uh, potential factories. I just moved this infantry up to threat this city as well because, I mean, I guess it's kind of sacking it to this medium tank, but I just feel like if this medium tank's in the corner just hitting infantry, I'm not feeling particularly bad about it either. And it's already a 5 HP infantry anyway, I suppose. Maybe not the correct play fully, but you know, either way. Uh, end up capturing this city as well. Another threat on my opponent. Obviously, this anti-air is in range, but now I have a tank to cover this this uh, this property as well. If they go for this attack, I have a tank attack to counter. The media tank is here, but it doesn't really want to be sitting up here covering one tank as well. So I'm just kind of pressuring my opponent on multiple fronts. And all of this is mainly from the fact that I have so much more infantry ready to capture these, uh, capture and threat of these cities. And my opponent hasn't built the uh, resources to maintain it. So you see here, I do end up going for this hit. This is my 7 HP tank that I mentioned last turn. Now healed to 7 HP. I move it on the city. And I hit this full HP tank. Uh, and my trade doesn't show up <laughs> to show you guys how much damage I'm dealing. I hit this full HP tank and I come out with a 5-4. This is how strong Kindle is on cities. And this is why I'm, I was talking about trying to hold this tile as much as I can. Because I want to have these options, especially while my tanks are like, you know, healing around. This is a 7 HP tank into a full HP tank, but I'm 150, 100, you know. And I literally hit it for 6 damage and take 2 back. Um, which is, you know, it's pretty crazy. Uh, and th these kind of trades is why, again, yeah, Kindle can really abuse new players. Because often you want to fight around cities, you know, most players get that. But uh, Kindle can really, really threaten you in, uh, in in these kind of scenarios. I end up moving this 2HP infantry down to threaten this 2HP infantry. I guess it could get traded off, but um, I suppose I, I would come out. I, I would just, you know, finish it next turn. I guess I'm just, like, applying more threat to this infantry, so they either feel the need to sack it, but just giving me space to move this one down. It's just a 2 HP infantry anyway, I suppose. Um, so I'm just using it to waste time. Uh, build tank. Another artillery in case this... I'm, I'm, I'm presuming this medium tank will move to the left, so I'm building an artillery to kind of cover this section as well. Just every time I see a medium tank dropped, I'm kind of building an artillery as a counter option. Dropping two infantry on the right here. I did have access to Urban Blight this turn. Uh, and I did think about it, but it is Rachel, so I'm not really getting any value. It's mostly monetary value I'm getting, right? Um, so I'd be hitting a medium tank, an anti-air, an infantry, an infantry, uh, but I'm not, and another infantry, but I'm not like delaying any captures. I, I won't get any advantage from the point that I got it out of the boost. Um, so I decided to sit on it instead in case my opponent, you know, takes some bad trades, wants to start healing the medium tanks or something. I thought I'd just sit on the urban blight instead and maybe wait for a better opportunity. And like I said, you know, having Urban Blight, you don't have to, you can slam it every time you have it, um, but you don't have to. You can hold it and, and just have the threat, you know, because it makes your opponent not want to place any units on any cities or, or build expensive units, you know, because then suddenly you have to waste a bunch of turns on repairs. They're dropping like 9 HP tanks everywhere, just stuff like this, you know, you can delay all their captures. You can get a lot done with it. So I do go for this anti-air hit on my infantry, stopping the capture. 
Um, but this means this medium tank should have to stay in this area, but they do actually move it aggressively to this right front, because I have quite a lot of pressure over here, especially with the artillery in position. So actually, they feel like they have to drop this area. So they end up kind of sacking this anti-air to delay a capture. Um, the infantry does... Get, oh, I put another infantry to reinforce as well. They do end up killing the 2 HP infantry I put here. The other 2 HP infantry ones that runs away. Uh, this one starts moving to the right. I think this is just a weird position in general. I don't know what you think you're going to accomplish here, especially when it's in range of the tank as well. Uh, and then I'm trying to pick up some of my infantry in the center, uh, stopping my, my cap here of their city. I actually got a one hit back here on the tank from my infantry. It's kind of funny. Uh, they end up picking up this infantry with a two hit KO, but it has kind of exposed this tank, which is already kind of low, but now no, it's even lower. And they end up dropping another medium tank, you know? <laughs> and it's just like, it's just such inefficient purchases. Uh, uh, when it comes to like unit count and kind of your army, it's just really inefficient choices. If I'm able to contain these medium tanks or even kill them, my opponent is just losing so much value as opposed to just having more options and having like kind of like a wider army. They end up leaving a base bare again. I guess they just didn't feel like they needed three infantry. This is just the consistent issue with my opponent the whole game. And you can see where I'm kind of like overrunning the map on so many fronts. And it's because my opponent is just A, not building any dudes. And then B, the ones they are building, a lot of them are getting sacrificed. And if you want to play this like really aggressive sacrificing style, you need to be building more units, you know? They're just kind of like running out of steam all over the map. I end up going for the artillery hit on this uh, medium tank. And then bam, as you can see, I've already got value. Huge, insane. <laughs> this artillery has already paid for itself. Um, obviously, it's a bit dangerous. Like, there's three medium tanks here. They are going to come in and kind of, like, smash this formation. So I'm a little bit nervous about it because they are just, like, spamming medium tanks up here. Um, but I'm feeling confident on the other fronts because now I know that all the money's up here. Um, th this area is, like, super easy for me to kind of take over, especially with, like, kind of the tanks I have down here. Let's go for the hit on this anti-air. Seven damage. Go for the first hit on this infantry. A4. Start moving up to pressure these captures up here. Uh, finish off this 2 HP infantry, and then I'm going to go for a first strike here as well, just to weaken this one. It's a 7-5, which is pretty good. Um, and yeah, just kind of, again, pressuring this comm tower, making it so they have to feel like they have to build resources here. And they will obviously want to commit to this top side. They've got three medium tanks here, right? They're going to have, they're going to want to commit to this fight and, like, keep applying resources in this area. Um, but I'm really making it hard for them by, again, winning on this front, I'm winning down here, I'm winning up here. It's just this area my opponent's dumped a bunch of money and a bunch of massive units that they kind of have any real control. And even then, they're not getting anything done. Like, these tanks aren't actually doing anything. I'm not losing any cities. They're just smashing into my tanks, you know. Uh, move down here, get a, another hit on this infantry, pressure get even more. Now I can't even trade back with either of these. Start capturing this neutral city again. Moving my tanks out. Start capturing this city down here. Uh, go for the tank hit, putting this infantry to 3 HP. Moving this infantry again to thre threaten this city, threatening to capture this neutral city as well. I just go for this cap, because I don't think this tank wants to stay here and hit again. I think even if it does, it won't do 5 damage, so I just carry on capping this city in its face. Uh, go for this cap up here, trying to waste time with the medium tanks, you know. It's, obviously, it's a 4 turn cap, it's not a, a huge threat, but my opponent's still going to feel like they have to do something probably. Start capturing this neutral city with an infantry. Again, you know, all they have is these three medium tanks, and it already feels bad to be wasting tank hits on, on infantry capturing cities, right? It's something I always talk about when you're taking offensive exchanges, like having infantry on cities capturing. It's like a massive red red uh, mist descends for your opponent, where they're like, okay, I can't give up this city, I have to hit the infantry. It already feels bad with tanks. Imagine how bad it feels with medium tanks. 16,000 funds to be hitting, hitting dudes, like... Feels bad, man. I move my tank just to kind of get healed here. I'm walling for this artillery, but I'm kind of expecting this wall to fall. I mean, like I said, I am putting these infantry here, so it's kind of making my opponent, you know, make decisions with regards to what they want to fight. But this one isn't really a high threat because it's like a four turn capture. So I'm not feeling super strong about this area, but at the same time, like, I'm feeling so confident about the rest of my fronts that, that I'm not super concerned about it. Uh, so I'm moving infantry back up here to kind of throw out these properties because I know this, this area is kind of doomed for my opponent. Moving more tanks down here. At this point, I just decided to drop a medium tank as well. Um, this is kind of like my last game where by the time I dropped one, it was where I already felt like, you know, if I shut down this attack, I've won the game. And I kind of felt the same way here where if I just shut down these medium tank pushes, I'll, I'll just win the game. So I, if I just drop a medium tank, put it on my city, it will literally 1v3 all of these medium tanks. You know, they're never going to push through. So that was kind of my goal here. I ended up building three more infantry. Didn't skip any bases, might surprise you. Let's see if you've been following my opponent's gameplay closely. Uh, they end up activating covering fire. 
Uh, I think I checked the missiles before and I was feeling pretty okay about it, but they ended up landing. I think one landed here in this location, uh, one landed uh, here, sorry, and the third one, actually I don't know what the third one was. I guess it was also up here. Uh, it hit this tank. The third one is really weird. I, I guess, okay, I guess, uh, wow, actually, okay, the third one is here. Because it, it, it hits these two infantry for some reason. Uh, that's really weird. I don't even know how the math for that one would have worked out. Because <laughs> this infantry gets hit, and this one gets hit, right? And then there's also one, there's one, like, here, I think. And it, I think, it's covering fire three or two. I think it's two. Maybe I should check the chart again while I have it open. Yeah, two range missiles. So I guess one must have hit here and hit like this, right? Because this tank got hit as well. I guess I could just move planner it and then we can actually see exactly where it hit. Apologies, but you know, now, now we'll know at least. Uh, so if we do a Rachel... This is a really useful uh, thing, by the way, if you guys aren't taking advantage of this in, this, in your game, so I would definitely recommend it. You know, you can, you can bring up any relevant... Uh, power and kind of see the application. So I can show the missiles. Uh, yeah, orange star missiles. But this one did get hit, so that's really strange. This doesn't even look right. I guess the maybe the algorithm doesn't even know what it wanted because it definitely didn't hit down here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I guess the game itself doesn't even know what happened. Maybe it bugged out. Really weird. Uh, hang on, I have to refresh. Maybe that, maybe I accidentally did it on the wrong turn. Let me, let me just try it one more time. Just so we can see what the actual value was. Yeah, it's definitely not how it hit. That's definitely not what happened at all. Uh, it didn't hit these ones. It hit up here. But I don't, I don't know if I'm missing anything. I don't think I've played any of the turn yet, right? This is the same board? Yeah, this is the same board. So I guess even the game doesn't know what it was meant to hit. But either way, it ended up hitting like this top. It ended up hitting up here. This guy got hit twice, so it must have been like here. Uh, up here for some reason, but like just on this infantry, which is really weird. Maybe it did bug out because I don't think it should have hit this infantry. I didn't even notice that in the game. Um, but yeah, I don't know why it hit this one. Really strange. Uh, maybe that's actually something to report. So yeah, they end up going for a hit on this uh, this infantry. Like I said, I'm just trying to like consume medium tank attacks because it's super valuable for me. Uh, they are going to break the wall, move in with this other medium tank to take out my artillery. Happens. He 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 already got his value. You know, I'm I'm feeling good. Still don't use my urban blight, by the way, I do have it sitting. Um, and Kendall's su superpower isn't isn't bad at all. 3% per city is very effective, you know? Even at 19 cities, that's 57% increased firepower. Um, pretty significant stuff, although I think it might just be... I, I can't remember if it's cities or properties, but, uh, you know, it's still a pretty significant advantage. Uh, every city owns, so it wouldn't be 19, it would be 14, but it's still, you know, 42% uh, increased firepower for me. 40, yeah, 42%. So it's definitely a significant buff, either way. Uh, they end up moving more infantry down here to try to reinforce this area, but they are going to have to build a tank or something to kind of hold it. Um, I was a little bit nervous because they ended up getting them a hit here if they wanted to take it, but I don't know if they do. Uh, they end up trying to stop this cap. They do one damage, stack another infantry. Another medium tank drops. My opponent has one mode and it's medium tank. Uh, they end up uh, picking off this infantry capping. They do end up getting the, the hit with the super... And, uh, yeah, I end up having, uh, my, my super this turn. I think I just tried to drop it. Yeah, I tried to super here. Just try to get some, some solid damage hits. But actually, I was doing less damage than I thought I would be. So, so, you know, it felt kind of, kind of bleh in that regard. Uh, I end up capping this city because they, they had to build an infantry here. Because, again, you know, they're dropping another medium tank. But that's, again, now this top area is undefended. They didn't build a tank here to cover this tank. Uh, even though they attack with the, the anti-air to, like, stop my, my incoming infantry. I have so many more on the way. That now this whole area is undefended again. It's because they're committing so much money to these singular locations. And this medium tank can't even hit anything in its next turn, you know? It's not even doing any relevant damage. Uh, I moved my tank down to hit this infantry that's coming to reserve. It's the same thing here, you know? They didn't send any units to this location and they didn't build anything to reinforce it. So again, another location that I'm just winning because my opponent is committing to these major builds as opposed to like... Um committing to the smaller ones, and they're also just behind in all the skirmishes because they refuse to build units in the early game anyway. Uh, cancel this capture, finish these fights up here. Now I have complete control of this area, gonna capture all these properties slowly. Move the medium tank onto the city, like I said. No way my opponent can fight it. 
Uh, I just moved this 5 HP tank to go attack uh, infantry, I guess. Yeah, I go for the 2 hit KO on this, and then I put the artillery here. Obviously, it's not covering this, but, you know, it is covering the infantry. And I'm just trying to get this artillery moving up so I can threaten some of these tanks from this side. Gonna go for the 2 hit KO on this tank. Even though it's 7 HP tanks, my, my super makes it possible. Finish that one off. Move this one back to get healed. Um, move in, you know, with another full HP infantry ready to capture the city. Move up with the tank, still not in the medium tank range, being careful about that to cover this tank. And yeah, now I'm just kind of winning property walls all over the map, you know, I've got uh, three turns for this comm tower, I'm finishing this cap next turn, finishing this cap next turn, that's a 4,000 swing. Plus 2,000 for me, minus 2,000 for my opponent. Drop another medium tank, it's just the same thing, you know, my opponent's so invested in this area, and I'm confident in everywhere else I'm playing because of how differently we played the early games and with regards to like, you know, what units we built and how many units we built. I'm so confident in all these other areas that, yeah, I may as well just slam medium tanks as well. If you're going to tech up and slam medium tanks, I'm just going to start slamming medium tanks too. Because if you lose these tanks, you lose the game. Whereas, uh, you know, I just need to hold you and then I'm winning all these other fights. You know, you're going to start running out of money. Like in two turns or next turn, my opponent will only get 15k per turn. And suddenly they can't drop a medium tank any turn anymore, every turn anymore, because they don't have the money for it, you know? They only now have enough funding to do a medium plus three infantry a turn, which is all their bases, right? Um, so if they still want to, like, be pushing for medium tanks, they're going to be taking massive unit count losses. And, you know, we've already seen how quickly that could snowball, you know? I'm 29 units to 11 right now, and it just feels like my opponent has no foothold almost anywhere except around these three tanks. And, you know, there's a whole other rest of the map. <laughs> like, these three tanks aren't winning him, no, aren't winning them the game. And they also can't capture my HQ, so it's not like the push is really accomplishing much anyway. Uh, goes into my opponent's next turn. Uh, they go for an attack on this infantry. Uh, obviously this infantry is never going to get in the city anytime soon. They go for another attack over here, finish this one, but they end up moving into artillery range. Finish this tank as well. Um, but, they, you know, I'm going to get another big hit here. I'm actually going to two-hit KO this with the medium tank as well. Uh, they move the infantry down, trying to trying to break through these kind of forces, just whittling them, I guess. But all really, these these hits are very sacrificial. They start doing a cap. They move the, the tank in to finish off my tank. Doesn't even get the finish. Another infantry is moving in. And at this point, I think they just feel like the damage is done. You know, they're looking at the board. I've got one, uh, two, one, two, three cities pop in next turn. Two of them my opponents. You know, this medium tank's gonna die. This one's already low HP. This one's on this this tank isn't in range yet, but I can move this one, and then you can't even counter hit the tank here, because I'll be getting two hits on your medium tank and I'll, I'll KO it. They have a medium tank down here, but it's gonna have to like reinforce one of these areas. They're already just too behind on the income. And, and you know, I always say the income is obviously the most important factor, and it's the way you win games is by capturing the cities and putting your opponent behind on the income, and then you can tech up, you know, in ways, you know, teching up is when you go from tanks to medium tanks or you know, tanks to neo tanks. Just building bigger units and your opponent just can't keep up because you have such a monetary advantage. But it's too hard for them to deal with kind of the swarm of units, you know. Even if you don't build medium tanks, being able to build, build three, four tanks a turn and your opponent can only build two, you know, you're always winning those fights. Um, so yeah, I mean, once again, I just kind of end up establishing an economic advantage. But I think this game really does show why is unit count such an important metric. And it's because, you know, you need the infantry to be able to take fights and get advantages and you need you know to be able to reinforce locations so slamming these big units all in one area it's going to win you that area but is it going to win you the game and as you can see on all these other fronts you know my opponent is just losing trades all over the board and even though yeah you know they have three medium tanks how much have they actually accomplished all of their hits have been on infantry i think they've killed a couple of tanks one artillery um but now it, you know they can't really do anything they're too slow to get out anywhere on the map um, and the units just don't exist for my opponent to the whole, you know, many of my pushes at all. So the Dota resigning. And I, yeah, I think this is a good game, yeah, to showcase the value of unit count, why it's relevant, why you build on every base every turn. You could just see my reinforcements were, were so much more effective as well. A lot of turns, you know, where I got tanks out here to reinforce captures. Um, you know, I always have tanks in, you know, you know, I have a tank in almost every relevant front. One here, you know, three here, one here, one here. So almost all of these battles... I have tanks, and my opponent just doesn't have the units to be able to, you know, to stop them. Especially in situations where, you know, if they have a tank and you don't have a tank, you have a recon or just infantry or an, an anti-air, you just can't possibly afford to fight them. You will always lose. So yeah, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this analysis. I don't think this game is, like, super insanely high quality. My opponent did make a lot of mistakes, but I do think it is a good showcase of why unit count is important and why dropping big tank is bad.
Um, so hopefully you guys uh, picked up something, you know, from that. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like. I really appreciate it. You can also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Trying to put out three, four videos a week. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I've been Snitch. This has been CEO Select. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you then.